Hello, my name is Robert Jacobberger. I'm currently a postdoc at Northwestern University, but I conducted the work in this talk in Mike Arnold's group at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Today, I'll present a technique that we've developed in which chemical vapor deposition is used to directly grow one-dimensional graphene nanoribbons from the bottom up. This nanoribbon fabrication is unique in that it yields aligned arrays of narrow, semiconducting nanoribbons with ultra-smooth edges and excellent charge transport properties using a process that's compatible with industry. Importantly, this technique also enables the direct integration of nanoribbons onto commercially available germanium and silicon platforms. First, why do we care about graphene nanoribbons? Nanoribbons are important because their one-dimensional confinement transforms graphene from a semi-metal into a semiconductor. The induced band gap varies roughly inversely with ribbon width, and to induce a technologically relevant band gap, the ribbon width must be less than 10 nanometers. The electronic properties of ribbons also critically depend on the orientation of the ribbon edges with respect to the graphene lattice, and the largest band gaps are expected in narrow ribbons with smooth armchair edges. Armchair nanoribbons have been predicted to outperform conventional materials like silicon because of their potential to achieve high charge carrier mobility, carrier velocity, current carrying capacity, and thermal conductivity. Unfortunately, research and development of nanoribbon-based technologies has been severely limited by challenges in the scalable fabrication of ribbons with narrow widths and well-defined edge structures. We've developed a bottom-up nanoribbon synthesis technique that overcomes many of the roadblocks that have limited other production methods. In this technique, semiconducting nanoribbons are grown directly on germanium and germanium on silicon substrates via chemical vapor deposition of hydrocarbons. This ribbon fabrication provides a high degree of control over the ribbon width, edge structure, placement, and alignment in a scalable fashion that can be easily integrated into semiconductor processing. During chemical vapor deposition, carbon precursor molecules adsorb to a catalyst surface where they decompose into hydrocarbon intermediate species. These intermediates diffuse on the surface and eventually bond to form graphene nuclei. The nuclei continue to grow as additional intermediates attach to the crystal edges. These processes occur throughout growth until the catalyst is completely covered with graphene. In this work, we exploit how isolated graphene crystals are growing before they merge to form these continuous films. While a wide variety of catalysts and carbon precursors have been used to grow graphene, here we decompose methane on germanium-001. Our previous work on graphene growth on metal surfaces has shown that a wide variety of graphene crystal shapes can be synthesized by tailoring the growth conditions, including the hydrogen and methane fluxes, the growth temperature, and the substrate composition, orientation, and surface structure. On germanium-001 substrates, we discovered that the crystal shape anisotropy diverges under certain conditions, resulting in the formation of high aspect ratio nanoribbons. For example, in this series of growths, graphene crystals with approximately the same width have increasingly longer length as the methane composition decreases. We conducted growth kinetic studies to better understand this phenomenon. We found that the ribbon growth rate increases with increasing methane composition and decreases with increasing hydrogen composition, as expected. But regardless of whether the methane or hydrogen composition is varied, the ribbon aspect ratio varies inversely with growth rate. Using conditions that maximize anisotropy, ribbons with sub-10 nanometer widths can still be hundreds of nanometers in length. This condition corresponds to an exceptionally slow growth rate along the ribbon width direction of less than 1 nanometer per hour, and therefore, in order to realize highly anisotropic ribbons, it's critical to operate in a regime in which growth is particularly slow. The ribbon width can be tuned down to virtually zero simply by controlling the growth rate and time. With these particular growth conditions, the ribbons have a log normal width distribution centered at 3.4 nanometers, in which 98% of the ribbons have widths less than 8 nanometers. The polydispersity in ribbon width is caused by ribbons nucleating at different times during growth, and is undesirable because it leads to ribbon-to-ribbon -ribbon variability and band gap. The nanoribbons are self-aligning along the 110 directions of the germanium-001 surface, resulting in two perpendicular ribbon orientations. While around 90% of the graphene crystals that nucleate evolve as ribbons, more compact crystals with lower aspect ratios and edges that are not aligned along the 110 directions are also observed. 
Low energy electron microscopy and diffraction show that all ribbons have edges that are macroscopically aligned along the armchair direction of graphene. Interestingly, the lattice of the crystals that do not evolve as ribbons is rotated with respect to the lattice of the ribbons, indicating that the anisotropic growth is driven only when there's a specific relative orientation between the graphene lattice and the germanium-001 surface. Scanning tunneling microscopy indicates that the ribbon edges are very smooth. The width of the ribbons is nearly uniform over the entire ribbon length, and the edge roughness is typically less than 5 angstroms over edge lengths of tens of nanometers. We also observe quantum interference patterns that are consistent with electron backscattering at atomically smooth armchair edges. The coherence of these interference patterns across the entire ribbon width, combined with the low edge roughness, indicates that the edges consist primarily of smooth armchair segments, but with some degree of edge roughness. The nanoribbons exhibit promising room temperature charge transport properties and field effect transistors. This is a plot of the on-state conductance versus the on-off ratio for dozens of these nanoribbon transistors. The variability and on-off ratio is due to polydispersity in the ribbon widths and therefore the band gaps. Nevertheless, ribbons with high on-off ratio between 1 and 10,000 can still simultaneously exhibit high conductance around 5 microsiemens. These data confirm that the ribbons are grown via CVD can have band gaps much larger than the thermal energy at room temperature and that the edges of the ribbons are sufficiently well ordered to realize high conductance. In fact, these ribbons exhibit among the best performance metrics reported in literature for ribbons produced via any technique, including bottom-up polymerization as shown here in blue. It's important to note that unlike our technique, the ribbons shown in red are produced using a method that is neither reproducible nor scalable. We've also demonstrated that nanoribbon growth can be initiated from the edges of nanoscale graphene seeds that are lithographically patterned on germanium-001. In comparison to growth without seeds, Seeding the ribbon synthesis enables precise control over the ribbon placement as well as unidirectional ribbon alignment. Furthermore, the use of seeds minimizes stochastic nucleation, allowing all ribbons to begin growing almost simultaneously across the substrate, rather than nucleating at different times, which greatly reduces the width polydispersity. Even without seeds, nearly unidirectional ribbon alignment can be achieved by conducting growth on vicinal substrates. For example, on nominally flat germanium-001, ribbons grow along the equivalent perpendicular 110 directions with equal probability, but on substrates that are miscut by 9 degrees, 90% of the ribbons can be oriented in a single direction due to reduction of the substrate symmetry from fourfold to twofold. In conclusion, we've demonstrated that chemical vapor deposition can be controlled to directly grow self-aligned nanoribbons with sub-10 nanometer widths lengths of hundreds of nanometers, and predominantly smooth armchair edges, well beyond the structural fidelity afforded by top-down techniques. The ribbons can have large band gaps and exhibit exceptional charge transport properties, and large arrays of ribbons with rationally controlled placement and alignment can be produced via seed-initiated growth. These results are technologically important because they enable an industrially compatible high throughput pathway towards the practical realization of high performance semiconducting graphene electronics. They also enable the direct integration of nanoribbons onto silicon and germanium platforms which may potentially lead to high performance hybrid group 4 electronics that take advantage of the superior properties of graphene. However, for this dream to be realized, we need to continue to optimize the seed initiated growth to further increase the nanoribbon density, decrease the nanoribbon width, and reduce the width polydispersity. Finally, I'd like to thank our excellent collaborators. The STM studies were primarily conducted by Brian Corrali and Nathan Geisinger's group at Argonne National Laboratory. The LEAM studies were primarily performed by Mathieu fortin Deschain and Osama Mountainabier's group at Polytechnique Montreal. The work on seeding was conducted by Austin Way in the Arnold group, and in another talk in this session, my colleague Vivek Saraswat will be presenting further work on adapting this nanoribbon growth onto epitaxial germanium thin films on silicon wafer platforms. I'd also like to thank the DOE and DOD for their funding. Thank you.